Welcome back to the Chad AC Show on News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM. KFYO. Joining me on the phones right now, we welcome him back to the program. Made a uh, surprising announcement on Monday. And uh, our next guest, he's been on uh, a few different uh, times uh, with us here on the program. State Representative uh, serving District 92, Jonathan Stickland. Uh, Representative Stickland, good morning. How are you today? Good, Chad. Good to be on. I'm actually a fan of your show. I listen to it on, on the internet sometimes. So Awesome. Everyone's doing a good job. Hey, I got, I got news. I'm not wearing a tie today, Chad. This oh, no. Great. <laughs> so you're relaxed. <laughs> this is relaxed Stickland today, right? The, that is correct. Yes, sir. I'm a recovering politician. Well, you're still technically a uh, state representative, yes. uh, Jonathan Stickland. Okay, so what? let's take us through uh, this announcement that you made on, on Facebook on Monday. Uh, I think it surprised a lot of people that uh, you decided not to run for re-election. What led you to this decision? Well, lots of things, but, you know, <clears throat> at the core of it, I'll definitely say family, business, and... Um, you know, just the, the way that I view government, I think a constitutional republic demands that we have citizen legislators and not career politicians. And when I first got started, you know, I wasn't I, – I can tell you, I didn't think we would honestly win when we first got started. But we did. Never lost an election. And uh, I always dreamed of being able to walk out on my own terms and uh, doing so before my neighbors and, and uh, supporters felt like I backed down. So I – you know, feel like we went full throttle for eight years, and I'm really proud of the work we've done, and this is exactly the way I had uh, wanted to walk out. When did you decide that this was going to be it? You know, constantly reevaluating, praying about it, seeking the Lord's will every time we, you know, run for re-election. But um, I would say um, even going into the session, I was looking even more, but Right after the first vote on the school finance bill, where I was the only no vote, um, really stopped and, and tried to reevaluate, like, what's the best way for me to serve the conservative movement? And that's that's when we really started looking at it. Well, what was it about that vote? Because hey, Les, you, you've been uh, you've been called a lot of things, uh, but, but, you know, conservative <laughs> firebrand. Uh, you've probably liked some yeah. of the things that you've been called. Uh, what, what did, was it Texas Monthly that called you the, the cockroach? Oh, uh, yeah. They rolled out a new award, the cockroach award. You know, um, my pastor told me, well, you know, you can really judge a man by his enemies. So uh, I, I, I'm proud they're forced to deal with, forced to talk about, because that means that we've had a huge part of the discussion of the narrative and in the direction of Texas. So, you know, I, it, it's kind of a weird thing being a politician. You almost have an obligation as popular and as powerful as you can to represent your constituents in the Constitution. So it's, it's very hard, uh, you know, for Christian conservatives, I think, to, to get into that mindset, because in every other aspect of our lives, we're supposed to be selfless and, and everything else. But, you know, in politics, you almost have to try and uh, elevate yourself to get your point across yeah. and to fight for your people. So it's, it's a little bit different. So so but, what, what was it about that vote? And, and you said that's where it kind of your mind sort of changed, right? Like it clicked that maybe you should be doing something different. Is that what I'm hearing? That after that vote, because, you know, after that, for listeners who don't remember the timeline, you also separated from the Freedom Caucus. Uh, Correct. You know, it had been this, uh, you know, calling this kumbaya, uh, you know, uh, legislative session really up until that vote, because you were the one Republican. You may have been the one person only uh, who voted against yeah. that. And and from that point forward, uh, Representative Stickland, it, it seemed as though. You you weren't happy with the direction of this session. A am I wrong? No, you're not wrong at all. Um, you know that I've I've been the only no vote on on countless bills, so that wasn't anything too new. But you know, I began to question um, whether I would would be more influential on the inside or the outside. And you know, when I when I came to the conclusion that you know. I think I can do more outside for the conservative cause and started to match that with, you know, all the personal stuff, family. And, uh, you know, my kids are, I've got a teenager, uh, 
as of December of this year. And so just a whole new stage of life for us and paired all that up. So, you know, it, it wasn't anything dramatic on that actual vote. I think it was just kind of a, a point where it, it caused me to ask some different questions that I have in the past. Was this, so, did, did this have anything to do with your district being a, a, a purple district? I don't think it is. I mean, honestly, if you, um, I, I'm making the prediction the Republican, whoever gets the nomination after me, uh, wins by double digits. And I mean that. And I think we could have too. Um, I was in Coppell in another area of Texas campaigning for someone else when our election results came in. We got hammered by some Obama PACs and some uh, federal players who came in helping Beto in the last 10 days. We never even sent out a mailer. I didn't hand out yard signs. Like, we really didn't do any campaigning at all. And, and that was certainly a mistake looking back, taking that for granted. But I think that if somebody, you know, actually campaigns and puts their name out there and, and draws a contrast, talks about what these crazy liberal Democrats are actually wanting to do in Texas, that it, it swings back to a solid Republican district. So that, that really didn't have anything to do with my decision, although I'm sure my um, opponents would love to <laughs> to say that. Well, they, they could say whatever they want. Let, let me ask you this uh, before we get into uh, a few other things, because I, I do want your, your overall thoughts on, on the session and where we're going, and and you know for you know for conservatives out there who have been watching this session and everything else, I, I want to get your breakdown on that. Uh, but first, let me ask you this because you said you know where can I have a greater influence? What's next? What's next for you? What do you plan on doing to? Because it sounds like you still want to have a voice in the process. You want to have a role in the process. What does that mean for you? Don't know exactly, um, but you know liberty is in my heart. Um, our values are ingrained in my faith, so I can't I can't get rid of it completely. I'm definitely going to put family first. That's the number one focus, and um, making some money, growing my business. But you know, we've got we've got a lot of people who have supported us along the way, and I think we've kind of become a bellwether for the conservative movement on social media and, and different things. And you know, I think it would be a waste and uh, a horrible thing to see that. I've talked about, I don't know, uh, maybe doing a podcast or definitely want to continue the Bad Bill of the Week series that we've been doing and yeah. and just giving the commentary um, that we have. So I don't know exactly what that looks like, but there's a lot of great organizations out there that I would love to, you know, volunteer my time for and, and work with and try and amplify the voice of the grassroots, train them. I've always felt like the more we can educate folks on the outside about what really happens in Austin, who's really looking out for them, we give them that knowledge, and frankly, it's their responsibility to run with it, and I think they will. So how can I arm those people with facts and information, having been on the inside for eight years? Were, were you happy... And you know you can. I mean, you you're you're now that you know, that you're retiring from the Texas House. You kind of not that you ever held back, Representative Stickland. And, and that's one thing. <laughs> you know, wh whether people liked you or didn't like you, um, I, I think that they always have to give you credit for never holding back. Like you would always give your opinion on on right. uh, on, on the issues. And, and as a as a radio host, I can tell you, I do appreciate that. Um, yes. <laughs> what? How? How did? How do you feel about House leadership? You know, there there was this big, uh, obviously with with Speaker Bonin uh, being there. This was his first term as, as Speaker. Um, th there 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 was a lot of fighting between you and, and the former Speaker Joe Strauss, who announced his new political group. By the way, today, uh, oh, yeah. I'll ask you about that here in a second. But but did you? <laughs> how did this, in in your opinion, for Speaker Bonin? How did this session go, and do you think do, do you like the direction that he took the House? No, but I, I do want to say this. Um, there were some aspects of the House that definitely got better, and I appreciate that, and I want to give credit where credit is due. Um, but this session was all about missed opportunity, in my opinion. I think we had a chance to come roaring back as a Republican Party and take back you know, any of this idea that Texas is turning blue. We had a chance to differentiate ourselves and offer 
um, what the Republican Party used to stand for, which is more freedom and less government. And um, I think we grew government in a lot of ways. And I think, you know, in talking to grassroots people, they are questioning, you know, what's the difference? Because we've given Republicans control of the legislature for a very long time now, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And so I think we had a chance to get back to our roots and really do some good stuff. Um, it was it was very obvious to me what we needed to do was draw a contrast, disarm our opponents by getting rid of taxpayer-funded lobbying and and uh, union dues, paycheck, uh, automatic dues withdrawals, and all the things that the Democrats have been using to grow their machine. We should have gone after that. We should have gone after election integrity to make sure our process is not being taken advantage of, which I have uh, strong opinions that it has been in a lot of cases. Those were the simple things that we should have done if we were going to war with these progressive liberals. And instead, we spent a ton of money. And, you know, no matter where you are on the spectrum, I don't know anyone who doesn't think that we pay too much in property taxes right now. That was such an opportunity for us to win. And I think the best thing, the best case scenario now, based on what we did, is that people are going to get their next property tax appraisal and how much they owe. They're going to get that bill, and maybe it stays the same. That's what we accomplished. We should have put money back in their pockets, not uh, taken as much from those folks, and said, look, this is what we want to do. And over here, the Democrats, they want more of your money, and they want an income tax. Um, it was, it was, it was an easy sell. And I think it would have led to a landslide victory. I think now that's in question and and we're going to have to work extra hard. And, uh, frankly, there's a lot of folks like leadership in Texas who are going to have to prove to the grassroots that they can be trusted. Well, and 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 I think there's some doubt there. And I was going to ask you, is there, was this a, a house problem or was this, I mean, because it seemed like the speaker, the Lieutenant governor and the governor were, Pretty, you know, pretty locked in together on all of these issues. I mean, is they were, this... and and I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I'm not trying to attack them personally. Sure, but it was very clear to me early in the session that there was not a well thought out strategic plan um, in how we were going to keep Texas red. Everybody knew we needed to. Everybody said they that we needed to do this, but nobody stood up with a plan and said this is what we're going to do. I, if 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 there was, and I just wasn't in on it, then I think it was an absolutely horrible plan because I don't know what any of them are going to stand up and say, vote for me because I did this. And that's a major problem. We cannot just win elections by saying we're not the Democrats. That's not good enough. We have to lay out a plan, and I don't think we have one. Visiting with Representative Jonathan Stickland here on the Chad HD Show. Uh, I, I did want to ask you about uh, one of your, your former good friends, uh, Speaker Joe, former Speaker Joe Strauss, uh, announcing a, uh, a a new pol- I guess new political group, Texas Forever Forward. Uh, they're, they're you know it looks like they're getting back involved in uh, Texas politics. What are your thoughts? Well, I think it's funny because my my thoughts on Joe were were the same when I first met him. Joe is all about Joe, and I think it's funny that he. Um, sat on $10 million that he had accrued under his powerful position from special interest lobby groups. And, uh, you know, he didn't help any of his friends or the Republican Party two years ago. And he should have spent that money then. And now it looks like he's trying to be relevant again and and using a, a lot of people's money to do so. So, you know, this is just further proof for me that Joe's all about Joe. He always has been. If he was a team player. He would have used that money when it was needed, and he would have uh, used it to help his friends. And I don't think there's many people in Austin who feel like he did. So uh, just just more typical Joe. <laughs> Visiting with Representative State Representative Jonathan Stickland, uh, you, you said that you're, you're not sure completely what's next for you. Any chance you run for office in any other capacity? Not now. Not now. Got to get these kids out of the house first. Yeah. So um, I've I've got uh, I've I've got I don't want to be that dad who uh, who missed out. And I've talked to a lot of people when I ran the first time. My girls were two and four, and like I said, now we're looking at teenage years and youth group at church. And and I I just I just want to be involved. I'm 35 years old. I don't want to shut any doors forever, but I don't want there to be a feeling that 
something is is right around the corner. Yeah. I, I'm 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 not going away. I think people will still see me. Um, but I don't plan on ruining my life and running for elected office again for a while. <laughs> I, I, I've got I've got a couple more questions for you before I let you go. And uh, one of the questions, and, and I hear this from a lot of people, you've been sort of the standard bearer uh, for Empower Texans, uh, at least as an elected official. Uh, you, you know, they, the Empower Texans, they love you. I, I keep hearing that Empower Texans is losing influence by the day. Uh, with lawmakers. Do you believe that's true? And do you believe with your retirement that hurts Empower Texans? Absolutely not. In fact, um, I I think Empower Texans is is more relevant than ever. And if you don't believe me, just look at everyone who's talking about them. I mean, these, I I think that they would love for that to become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, But politicians don't talk about things or people that don't matter. And so the fact that they are absolutely obsessed and living rent-free in all of their heads tells me they're more worried and concerned than ever before. Look, Empower Texans is, is, is not just a group. It literally represents hundreds of thousands of Texans across the state. And if you don't believe me, just look at what we can see publicly. I mean, I don't know of many groups in, in Texas politics that has hundreds of thousands of followers on Facebook and their email list. I know. Um, that they are the silent majority and that the powers that be would love to silence them in every way possible. But I also know how many people in their district get those emails and get that endorsement, and it matters, and it continues to matter. And I think it will continue to grow because they're one of the only groups that are out there telling the truth. I got about uh, about a minute and a half or so, and I want you to give some advice. How do you think Republicans – can keep Texas red moving into 2020 and beyond? We have to tell the truth. We have to draw a contrast. We have to deal with the legal immigration immediately, and we have to protect the election process. Um, Other than that, we need to disarm the Democrat Party. So those those are my five things right there. We are at war. The left believes we're at war. We need to quit placating to the middle. These people are not going away. We're not going to be able to give them crumbs and a little bit here and there. We are fighting a battle for the for the hearts and minds of Texans, and the Constitution and limited government have to win. We can't win if we don't name our enemies. So it's time to buckle up, strap up, and go into battle. Representative Jonathan Stickland, appreciate your time. I'm sure we will uh, be hearing from you in the future. Always good to have you on the program. Chad, you're great. I'll continue listening. Thank you, sir. I hey, appreciate it. That's Representative Jonathan Stickland here on the Chad HD Show. I don't think you've heard the last from Jonathan Stickland.